How many times has this happened to you? You're a colonel in the People's Liberation Army Air Force in charge of a fighter aviation regiment. You're going about your day when suddenly a gigantic kaiju attacks Shanghai. All the local Jaegers are otherwise occupied, so it all comes down to you and your combat aircraft. What do you do? Now, while the details of this scenario might differ from person to person, chances are that these events have happened to you or someone close to you. And it's no wonder. Every year, kaiju attack thousands of cities across various alternate realities. What's surprising, though, is despite the prevalence of these attacks, combat aircraft are still used in a widely ineffective manner. So today, I'd like to look over the do's and do not do's of attacking kaiju from the air. Let's start with a brief look into a recent kaiju attack that occurred in San Francisco. Ouch. Do you see what went wrong there? Let's start with the aircraft involved. The F-22 was designed first and foremost as an air superiority fighter. While it does possess some ground attack capabilities, it's meant to shoot down enemy agile, lightly armed fighters, not gigantic lumbering kaiju. And this brings me to combat aircraft anti-kaiju success strategy number one. Use the right tool for the job. In that instance, the F-22 was the wrong choice. A strike fighter or a dedicated bomber would have been able to deliver much more heavy ordnance onto the target. Let's take a look at how this could have gone. Oh god, those aren't gonna hit us, are they? Oh my god, they hit it! They just hit it right now! You guys, they just hit it! They hit it with... Oh my god! Well, that's an improvement. But did you catch what else went wrong in that original clip? The F-22 has a service ceiling of 65,000 feet, so why was it flying so low to the ground? This brings me to combat aircraft anti-kaiju success strategy number two. Don't fly so low to the ground. If the kaiju you're fighting can't fly, there's no reason to get anywhere near it. But of course, sometimes they do fly. Let's look at another clip. Well, that didn't go very well either. And it's all because they didn't follow combat aircraft anti-kaiju success strategy number three, maintain distance. Modern anti-ship missiles have a range of well over 100 miles, so there's no reason to close the distance like those F-35s tried to. And once the missiles have been fired, why stick around? This isn't some air show, this is a combat mission. Why fly in formation with Rodan? But sometimes, you can do everything right and still not have things go to plan. Let's take a look at another clip. You hate to see it. They used the right tools for the job, they weren't flying close to the ground, they maintained distance and they still got destroyed. And this brings me to the last combat aircraft anti-kaiju success strategy. Maybe don't bother. Unless the kaiju you're going up against is a pathetic tuna fish eating loser, combat aircraft rarely make any difference whatsoever, usually being tossed away before Mecha Godzilla or a Jaeger or some kind of super weapon can show up to finish the job. So the next time you're in charge of a fighter squadron and a kaiju attacks Shanghai, maybe just don't pick up the phone. But that, of course, is just my opinion. Do you have a better way of combating kaiju with aircraft? Have they ever been truly effective? Do you know why those F-22s defending San Francisco carry two rotary cannons when the F-22 only carries one? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this has been a Templin Dispatch.